What's up everyone? This is Diana Rose. Welcome to my channel. You see the thumbnail so you know exactly why you're here. I bring a unique commentary to your favorite reality TV shows and whatever is popping on social media. Before we get started though, please hit the like, subscribe, and your notification bell if you haven't already because that's how others find me right here on YouTube. Then head over to Instagram. Follow me there if you're not, Diana Rose. And on Facebook, I go by Diana Rose Real Talk. Y'all already know I appreciate every single one of you for rocking with me. And let's get it started, you guys. Let me put this ticker up. This discussion is about pop culture. All comments are opinion and allege. I'm just doing commentary on uh, some audio that is out there right now um, on Shirley Strawberry and Ernesto. This audio has been dropping uh, almost every day, I believe. Um, but I did a video the other day where I shared with you guys that Steve Harvey and Shirley Strawberry were going to talk about their own personal controversy, so to speak, uh, tomorrow, Monday morning, okay? Um, Steve has a lot going on with his wife, Marjorie, and uh, Marjorie's ex-husband, Jimmy Townsend, who has put out a book about, I guess, his drug dealing days or selling days. He went to jail for a long, long time, and he himself said that he did not expect to get out. He said that he thought he was going to die in there. Even asked Steve or asked his family if they could ask Steve to help him get a pardon so he can get out, which Steve did not do. Um, however, uh, Right now, Jimmy Townsend has a book out. He is using Margie's name, Steve's name, and Lori Harvey's name to sell that book. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that it is causing a lot of waves at the radio station. Steve also, right now, uh, has a lot of rumors out there about his wife possibly having an affair with someone that was a good friend of Steve. So he said that he is going to talk about that uh, on Monday. And he said Shirley will be talking about her situation as well with her husband, Ernesto. Now, how much Shirley can actually share since this is, you know, still in court. Her husband is right now in jail, uh, unable to make bond because I think it's too much or maybe people who had initially uh, wanted to uh, help him out because there was an audio where he said he had an anonymous donor. He said that there were family members who were going to put up their homes in order to meet his bond. Uh, and then he came back and said, that uh, his lawyer told him there was an anonymous donor who, um, you know, had put up the money. Um, all he had to do was wait for this case or court date. And uh, all of that seemed to have been pulled back. Uh, no family member putting up the home uh, and no anonymous do donor. Not anymore anyway. So any hoots, if you guys missed that video, please check it out. Let's give me the name. It actually has this as a thumbnail. And the name of the video is called... Shirley Strawberry warned about radio's conduct clause. Your husband will get you fired. Either way, I give you guys a lot more detail. And I told you on Friday that Steve and Shirley were set to discuss this on Monday. Um, and it turns out they dropped the audio, the promo for it uh, this morning. So on a Sunday, the day before they dropped the promo. So let's listen to a little bit of it. And then uh, we'll get into the next part of this. All right, y'all, this is it. We've ignored it. Ain't no more ignoring it because on Monday morning, the strawberry letter about to get real. This would be a real strawberry letter because the subject of this letter on Monday morning is I didn't know I was going to be my own letter. That's right, Shirley. Steve and Shirley going to dress all this, this out there. What got said, how everybody felt, what's going on, what we going to do. Okay, so let's see how much of their story they tell. I do believe that he is referring to himself as well because there's just as much out there on Steve. I shouldn't say just as much, but they, you know, equal because both of them, like I said in my previous video, have pristine or they attempt to have pristine images uh, on the radio. And I think that's how uh, the radio station would like it. You know, they don't really play about that when people's outside lives get a little bigger than the actual show. And Steve had warned Shirley um, that the radio actually has a conduct clause. The radio station has a conduct clause for all of them. 
<laughs> okay, to please mind your P's and Q's so that when people are listening in the morning, they are doing their drive time. They want to laugh and have a good time. They don't want to know what, you know, be worried about what you guys have going on. So we will see what happens with them uh, tomorrow for sure. And I will be doing a video or follow up on that. Um, so let's talk about what happened tonight, you guys, which is Shirley and Ernesto. So this is my commentary on this because, um, Y'all, this conversation between the two of them felt so weird to me. I was like, um, Shirley was really eager to convince Ernesto in this first part of the conversation where she mentions that her daughter has a restraining order against her husband. Um, he's telling her, nah, it ain't, it ain't the restraining order. It's something else. And she goes, no, it's the restraining order. And I kept saying, well, Shirley, if he's telling you it's not the restraining order, why are you so hell bent on convincing him that it's the restraining order? Are you trying to stop him from saying something that you don't want him to say over the phone? Or are you really in the dark <laughs> is the question. Um, to me, and, and also if she is trying to convince him that, um, you know, she's in the dark, then as a scammer and a hustler, I would think he would be just a little bit wiser to Shirley. But right now, it feels like they are both kind of playing each other, at least in this first part of the phone call. I'm going to play it. Y'all can listen in because I know that first time in when you listen, you're just like flabbergasted at the fact that her daughter would have a restraining order against him at all. But there's a way she is talking to him where she's like, mm-hmm, mm. She's making these grunts and these sounds that you would only do if you're kind of like, listen, motherfucker, okay? I know what you did kind of thing. So maybe I may be giving her too much, but I want y'all to listen to what I heard. Uh, and then y'all can talk to me in the comments and let me know if you think different, okay? So let's hear this. First part of the audio, again, if I did not say this, this is coming from the phone calls from prison channel. She has been the one who's been releasing this. Um, I've been saying this from the beginning. She has been scouring hours and hours and hours of tape. Um, the first time I heard it, I think it was on Pam. Uh, I think her name is Pam the Esquire. She's a lawyer attorney. And she said there was over 2,500 hours worth of tape and that this particular um, channel, phone calls from prison, had literally um, did the legwork to get the information. Um, and so everybody has been, you know, kind of pulling this information, giving their conversation about it. So kudos for, to her. Uh, but this, this has been going on for a long time. I think since early July, uh, maybe even before that, maybe in June. Okay. June, early June. Okay. Either way, let's listen to this first part that I was telling you where she mentions the restraining order and almost again, seems like she's trying to convince him it's the restraining order. And when he tells her it has nothing to do with that, I talked to the lawyer. Uh, I heard what he had to say. The shit he was reading off was not a restraining order. Listen to how she response to that. Like, mm, mm. here we go. I'm a lawyer. So I do that. And they put me on the leg monitor. And they said I can't move. I can't uh, go back to Fulton County until this is all the way resolved. And I can't to talk or be around Sheridan, period. Okay. Because she has a um, restraining order. So just so we're clear, Sheridan is Shirley's daughter. I don't know what it is. It's, it's a... Yeah, it's a restraining order. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah. I you... No, you didn't tell me that. I thought I did. I'm sorry. I meant to. No, I, I, no, I didn't know nothing about all that. Don't fool that. What don't fool say nothing about no restraining order. Don't fool say, say that uh, some way something different. Way different. Oh. Yeah, way different. So... Yeah. It's a restraining order. Yeah, that ain't what that, that ain't what that warrant say though. That ain't, that's not what that warrant say. It says nothing about no strain order. Period. Uh -huh. So somebody lying. I'm saying that right now on that warrant, it don't say none of that. That's not what they read out to me. Well, it, but that's what the um. I think that's. I guess that's from the lawyer from DC. 
Oh, I don't know when he told you that. When he told you today? No, I, I haven't talked to him. He told me that. Remember the first time? Remember when I told you about that? Oh, uh, no, that ain't, that ain't about that. No, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that's, I'm not going to go in detail. I just got to, okay. I can't talk on the phone no oh. more. Yeah, okay. I, find, I find a lot of the things that I can't talk on the phone about. No, this case shit, none of that. I'm done with that shit. I can't even really talk, to be honest with you. But anyway, okay. so, I get. Okay, so the way she was like, no, it's the restraining order. Like she's trying to convince him about a warrant that he knows. And when he says, no, that's not what the warrant says. She doesn't say, even if, even if he said, I can't talk about it. Like she doesn't say, well, I'm going to call the lawyer or she doesn't say anything that says that she's even curious about what else it could be. So that's why I was like, most people, most people, uh, if you know, there's a restraining order and he's telling you that there's something else to this most people would say, listen, sir, I got to uh, hang up with you and find out what this is. I'm either calling my child or I am calling uh, the lawyer that she pays for to find out what these other charges are. And then she mentions a lawyer in D.C. He's like, well, when did you hear this? The, you talked to the lawyer today. No, no, honey, the, the lawyer in D.C. I was like, Shirley, are you at this point playing him because even though people say that you're naive and you know just there's no way <laughs> there's no way at this point um that's how i felt anyway but y'all can let me know what y'all think in the comments do you think she knows or that she knew at this point and she's just trying to get him to talk more because at the who does that who does it is, is the question. Uh, it just felt really off-putting that he was just like, it's something else. And she just blew, just completely swept it under the rug. Um, now, the other part, the other thing that she said in there, if you guys have been following my channel, um, when she initially said to him that her daughter had went to the police station, talked to the cops, he flipped out. He was like, How does that girl hate me that much. Like he's screaming at Shirley and Shirley's like, honey, honey, listen, they, they tricked her into coming. Um, they tricked her into coming. So this, this restraining order would have happened after that. Right. Because she, he doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything about that. She said, he goes, does she hate me that much? And she tells him, they tricked her. They tricked her because they were telling her uh, that the kids' names were on things and that her name was on things. You know, she lived in our house. Of course, her name would be on something. Um, but she was just making it seem really cute, pack, you know, a nice little package. You're making too much of this is how she was responding to him. Calm down. And now all of a sudden she says, did I forget to tell you? Uh, yeah, you forgot to tell him clearly. Um, but y'all can let me know what y'all think in the comments again. Um, cause I know that Shirley is getting a lot of heat, a lot of smoke. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out with this bond that he said, um, th in this conversation, he also says that he has a bond. So, uh, in a previous video, we heard him say that he had an, an, an anonymous donor who was going to meet his bond. He had initially thought that his family members, there were certain family members who were going to put it, put up uh, their homes uh, to uh, get him released. And then he said that his lawyer told him, you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, apparently an anonymous donor has come in and that this anonymous donor has taken care of everything. Well, when he's telling her that he has this bond and she's like, thank God, let's make a prayer thanking God to, you know, let's say a prayer thanking God that you've received this bond. I'm so happy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then she's like, when can you get out? He's telling her the, you know, the conditions. Well, I'm going to have to wear a leg, uh, a leg monitor and yada, yada, yada. And she's like, cool. When can you get out? And he said, well, I have two more charges I have to go to court for. And they're saying that they have probable cause and some other things, but after this case, um, you know, he, he expected that he would be able to make bond, only he didn't. Again, this call happened in October. Uh, so he had been sitting in jail, you know, all the way up through uh, the most recent bond hearing where, you know, he had multiple charges and literally over a million dollars worth of bond. Okay. So let's listen to a little bit of that because I was curious now 
who was the anonymous donor and if that anonymous donor had pulled back on the bond. Clearly his family did. So if he had multiple family members willing to put up their homes, uh, I wonder if all of these charges made them rethink all of that. Okay. Uh, that was that part. The other part in this conversation is um, he tells Shirley that his lawyer tells him or, or when he's in court uh, that the, the prosecutor is saying that everybody that he's ever dealt with is afraid of him. And then I want y'all to listen to how Shirley responds to that too, because again, I don't know if she's just in zombie land or if she can't even muster up the, the, you know, what it takes to say, oh my God, who would say that about you? She's, it's such a lackluster response. It is just making me think there's something else going on. So let's listen to this real quick and uh, y'all can let me know what y'all think in the comments. Answer the killer, it's the hurtful part. The uh -huh. DA said everybody I deal with, they're afraid of me. They're terrified of me. That shit really fucked me up when, she, when he said that. They're terrified. Oh, and the thing going on with the case. They just build up. Yes, the, 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 the society is afraid of me. That's basically what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> that shit crazy. That shit fucked my brain up then when he said that. That's what he said. So that's their job. That's what their job is. That's what their job is. Some kind of monster. That's so not true. Well, wow. guess, well guess what? It is what it is. Yeah. Wow. That's what it is. Wow. It's okay. So again, that was the most lackluster response to, wow, wow, what? Are they trying to make you uh, like out, of, out to be some sort of monster or something? I was like, Shirley, this just feels like the fakest conversation. Like you're trying to pull it, every, all, the, the, all the emotion and energy out that you can. I don't know if maybe he's been in jail for so long. She just can't even, she can't even do it. Um, but it just, it was not a good response. Uh, the other thing, I'm going to play this third video that also made me think this way. Um, he's telling her uh, that the, he has people that are against him, that he's always been the nice guy, and that once he get out of here, he knows not to be the nice guy anymore. And he said, it's just one of those things where when the truth comes out, we're all just going to know. And she literally grunts. She does Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now let's listen to this. And then, um, yeah, it's crazy y'all. Um, again, when you're listening to this tape, that first go round, you may not actually hear this, but I listened to it a few times just because I was really interested in how Shirley was responding. And it was very, uh, it was different from that first time around when we first heard those tapes and she was being super supportive. This doesn't sound as supportive, but check it out. Every time. And they don't, every time. And they don't think you deserve anything. You don't deserve me. You don't deserve anything, but you're, uh, oh. So yeah, she says that to him too. She tells him that they don't think that you deserve anything. You don't deserve me. But even how she says that, oh, like, I don't know. That that doesn't feel like a, a sincere, um, like she's really like behind him. Uh, oh. uh, that relieve you a little bit? Could you sure relieve you a little bit? I just got process. <laughs> yeah. I, as long as you're relieved a little bit. So, so we're on the way. We're on the way. Thank yeah, God. yeah. Yeah, I'm on the way. Yeah, I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. I just, I'm grateful for God, you know? Yeah, I'm grateful. Very grateful. Wow. You know, sometimes you just sit back. You just sit back. You be wondering what, well, you know, Sasa told you this. And you be like, I don't really believe that, but I'm going to take their faith value. And it takes time. The truth come out later. And they come out in the hardest place. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Well. Did you hear that? When he said, sometimes you don't believe something, you take it at face value, and then later the truth, you don't want to believe it, then later the truth comes out. And she goes, huh, yeah. That is an odd way to respond to that. Because he's trying to pretend like he's innocent with her. So let's listen one more time. Yeah, 
just sit back, you be wondering what, well, you know, Sasa told you this, and you be like, I don't really believe that, but I'm going to take their faith value. And it take time, the truth come out later. And they come out in the hardest place. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Well, I love you. Anyway, y'all can let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. I thought it was odd. I really did. I thought it was odd. Um, of course, she has this conversation where she is um, talking to him about saying, you're innocent. You're like Job. You're like Job in the Bible. You know, only person who believed him was God. And you are going to, you know, have this redemption like Job. And I was like, even that sound effing crazy. But maybe it's just because I know he's guilty. <laughs> it just sounds like he's guilty. I, I did say at the beginning that he's innocent until proven guilty. But damn, there's just so much going on right now. But anywho, listen. Listen to how she says this, okay? Um, her definition of him being like Job. That's the best advice I can give you. You know, read that scripture that I gave you. Think about Job, how he blessed him, you know, at the end of it all. How, how much he was blessed, you know? People That's accused right. him too. They accused him, you know, if he hadn't done anything. But they thought he did, but he was just saying that he, he didn't. He was lying, but he wasn't lying. God knew he wasn't lying. So, anyway, it's going to be all right. Like you tell me, everything's going to be just fine. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's going to be like you tell me, everything is going to be just fine. Not that she believes him, but like you tell me, everything will be just fine, okay? Uh, You're going to have to pull a miracle out your ass like Job, okay? That is where we are in this conversation. Uh, you know, everybody has to go through stuff in life, you know? Yeah, that is true now. You Crazy. Okay, and then... Literally, the last part of this conversation um, is when we find out that um, Ernesto's son and his brother are, you know, basically in cahoots to keep Shirley in the dark. Um, so I don't know. At this point, I feel like um, Shirley has to know all the rest of the, the details. There's some lady named Sanya out of... Um, out of Florida. I believe that's where it's from. So she's out of Florida. She's the one who is supposed to fly to Georgia and speak to Ernesto's attorney on his behalf because he said, Shirley doesn't deal with this street shit. Okay. She don't know anything about the cops or courtrooms or anything. She's in la la land. I need you to come down and speak to this person on my behalf because I haven't been able to get answers. So he's having this discussion with her. Um, and he tells her to who else to get in contact with. Clearly, uh, I need you to call my brother, call my son. Uh, they'll, you know, share details with you when I can't apparently. Um, and he's basically saying to her that his family is like him. Actually, he says they're like us. My son is like us. Okay. He's special. That's his way of saying that he understands the, the game. Okay. He understands the game. Unlike which he's already pointed out, unlike his wife, Shirley doesn't understand the game. Um, so listen to this part of the call. And uh, yeah, one second. Should we call him? Yeah. yeah. Should we call him? Yeah, yeah, you have to call him. He ain't regular. He ain't regular. So she's re he's talking about his uh his son. You got to call him. He ain't regular. He's not going to uh put anything on a text. And I do believe he said yet yeah, he doesn't do anything that uh you know, could be picked up by the police is what I believe he says. So check this out. You said he ain't regular. Nah, he ain't regular. He's right. He, he, like, he, like, he just, he's like me and you. He's special? Yeah, he's special. Yeah, he's he special. Yeah, he, he's special. Yeah. 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 I sent you a text this time. Your father asked me to send you a text regarding... I'm on the line. I said I'm on the line. So you get my yeah. Yeah. He can hear you. Okay, cause I told him you're special. You like me. You, you like, you like me and her. You, you don't do that text shit. You got, you got to talk, talk real. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. Is you the police? Yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> 
So yeah, that that was wild. And then there is also a call that happens uh, between his brother and Shirley. Uh, his brother's name is, I believe, Lamont. Um, his son's name was is Dion, um, but. Uh, Lamont is also, again, just in on the game. And he's so, you know, into doing his part and acting out. He is gets on the phone with Shirley and uh, his brother, Ernesto. And he just says, basically does this whole prayer. God's going to get you out of this. You ain't got to worry about nothing, man. You know, you got family who loves you. We're going to make sure we stand behind you kind of thing. It's just all at this point. It's, it's a lot of game. It's a lot of game. And I have to say, I don't know uh, that Shirley's not a part of it. I think she might be playing some game too. We might have to hear these other calls and I definitely cannot wait to hear uh, what happens on the radio tomorrow. Uh, but y'all talk to me in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Um, did you listen to it a few times like I did and you know, pick up on anything different? Uh, again, talk to me in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit your notification bell and I will check you all on the next one.